In this video I'm going to talk about X-ray absorption, the, me the three methods that you'll need to know about for aging physics, and then link that with how that's used to produce an image. I'll only be looking at conventional X-rays in this video, so I won't be going into computed tomography. Right, there are three methods of absorption. We have the photoelectric effect, Compton scattering, and pair production. In photoelectric effect, we'll be familiar with that from AS physics. The photon is absorbed and its energy is given to one of the orbital electrons in an atom and that electron escapes the atom. So In Compton scattering, in this case, not all of the energy is absorbed. The, the, the incoming X-ray photon strikes an electron and is scattered with a lower frequency. So an electron, it does escape, but you also have a lower frequency Photon. So you have both of those afterwards. Pair production, the, f the photon is absorbed, but instead of being, by, being absorbed by an electron, as in the case of these two, this one is absorbed by the nucleus. And what we have here are an electron and a positron produced, the energy of the photon is converted into mass and then kinetic energy as well. So on that note, let's think of the way that the energy is conserved in these interactions. So for one, the photoelectric effect, photon energy is used to remove the electron from the atom, that's the work function plus the kinetic energy that the electron has afterwards. And that would be the maximum kinetic energy in the usually state. In Compton scattering, it's the same terms. So the electron is removed from the atom, so there's the work function. And then there's kinetic energy as well, the electron is moving afterwards, so it has K. There's a third term though, which is that the, the scattered photon with a lower frequency has energy as well, according to HF. So F prime is the frequency, the lower frequency for the new photon that is scattered. Pair production. Photon energy is turned into, according to Einstein's mass energy equivalence, the and this is the energy equivalent for one of the electron or the positron that's created, plus the kinetic energy, half mv squared. For, so when the electron and positron are created, they move away from the nucleus, so they have kinetic energy. Because the electron and positron have the same mass, that whole, those terms grouped together there are multiplied by two. So that's what happens in terms of the energy. The amount of absorption in different materials then is dictated by the likelihood of these three interactions happening. If you have a larger nucleus, or sorry, a larger atom, atom with a larger mass number, then one is more likely because you have more electrons. per unit volume of space. <clears throat> Two is more likely, so photoelectric effect is more likely. Compton scattering is more likely because, again, there are more electrons. 
Number three is more likely because you have a larger nucleus. So there's an increased likelihood of the X-ray photon striking an electron or striking the nucleus and then having one of these interactions happen. So if you have a higher atomic number, so larger, so larger Z number, atomic number, then you can have increased likelihood of absorption. <coughs> Uh, we can picture that as well. So we have a small nucleus, just a few electrons, larger nucleus, surrounded by lots and lots of electrons around it. No, not really even, but that's fine. <coughs> okay, so Let's relate this to what's going on in the body then. In the body you have bones. Bones have, uh, because of the calcium content, have a Z number of about 14, an average, a mean atomic number. Soft tissue Skin, muscles, fat, Z number about six to eight. And then if you're looking at the chest, count chest, then you've got a lot of air there, the lungs. And there the Z number is about one to two. So bones have a, you have a higher mean atomic number with lungs at the bottom the lowest. So in bones you have a larger chance that x-ray photons will be absorbed, soft tissues roughly in the middle and in the lungs you have the lowest possibility. So that means that if we have our x-ray linear accelerator here producing x-rays coming down here patient here, and we have our detection here, then the x-rays that get through the patient will reach the detector, and so if there's high likelihood of them getting through the detector, they'll reach the photographic film or the, or the um, digital detection. If there's bones, then there's less likelihood, and so on. So X-ray images are built or are based on how much X-rays reach a point on the detector. If a photographic film starts off white and then photograph, uh, then X-rays turn it dark and and black, if lots of them get through. So here we would expect the film to remain white or if they're smaller bones maybe grey, uh, soft tissue that would be grey and this would be black. So most x-rays reach the detector, detector at the lungs, fewer for the soft tissue and hardly any at all for the bones. I'll add in an animation illustrating that point. Hopefully that will make that clear. photoelectric effect, Compton scattering here, a little bit less there, and hard, very little in comparison taking place there. 
Okay, next thing to consider is the use of image intensifiers. X-rays are not very good at turning photographic film dark. They will, but you'll need to leave the X-rays being exposed to the photographic film for a while. And if you do that, that means the patient has to be exposed to X-rays for a while. That's going to increase their dose. We want to keep the dose as small as possible, so we want to keep the time of exposure as short as possible. Image intensifiers use a scintillating material to turn x-rays into visible light. <coughs> so we've got our x-rays in here. That's our image intensifier. And here is our film. This is uh, for photographic film. An x-ray will turn, if the x-ray goes through here, it will turn the photographic film dark. But if the x-ray is absorbed by the intensifier, then what the x-ray, what happens inside is that the atoms in the intensifying crystal are raised to, an, to a high energy state. And then they will lose, they will lose the energy in form of visible light photons and drop back down. And they emit, for every one X-ray photon, they emit many visible light photons. And visible light photons are better at turning photographic film dark, so we'll have more cases of the film going dark. So it turns the film darker at a faster rate. So that will enable us, because the photographic film is turned dark faster, that will enable us to shorten our exposure time. So the first x-ray taken was by Röntgen, and he did that in the 1800s, near, close to the 1900s, and he took an x-ray of his wife's hand and it took 15 minutes to get the exposure. And it's not a particularly good exposure, but this was pioneering stuff at the time. Now, x-rays can be taken in a matter of milliseconds, like 10 milliseconds. So 15 minutes to 10 milliseconds. And one of the ways you can do that is with this intensifying method. That's image intensifiers. Next, we have contrast media. So we, we've noted that the soft tissue has a low atomic number average or mean atomic number. So that means if you want to get a decent image of soft tissue, with x-rays that's very difficult unless you have some method of enhancing it. And there is a method for doing that and the, it's called contrast medium. One such contrast medium is barium sulfate. Barium has a high proton number. Sometimes it's called radio, it's radio opaque. So that, that means that it, just as uh, this object here is opaque to visible light, visible light can't pass through. So barium is also radio, is radio opaque. X-rays can't pass through or they it's much more difficult for them to pass through this barium sulfate because it has a high pr proton number. Con by taking barium sulfate into the body, ingesting it through the mouth, then the barium sulfate can coat the intestines, which is soft tissue, and therefore the average uh, atomic number for the intestines is increased appreciably. And that allows you to get a good x-ray image of the intestines so you can see if there's something wrong, some blockage, some constriction in the intestines. So that's how you can do it with, um, how you can get a, an image of soft tissue by using contrast media. All right, so what I've looked at is the methods of absorption, related it to the body and looked at the 
atomic number of bones, soft tissue and lungs, and then how that affects the X-ray absorption based on those methods of absorption there. We looked at how image intensifiers can decrease the exposure time and how contrast media enable imaging of soft tissue.